green screen footage just got a whole heck of a lot easier, thanks in large part to Switchlight, which is a app from Beeble, I believe it's called, and uh, it uses AI to extract, let's scroll down here, extract materials such as albedo, normal, roughness, specular, and ambient occlusion, uh, depth information, so that when you input all that into your 3D virtual production software of choice, that the lights will interact naturally with your subject. You'll be able to composite it more naturally. You can kind of get an idea here. You get an idea of the video I shared up at the front of how that kind of turns out. And so I'm gonna go over what I did to create the video that you saw. It's not a full blown tutorial because I don't want this to be two, three hours long. I'm just gonna sort of overview everything. And just to say, I'm not a professional at Blender. I'm not a professional at Unreal Engine. So I'm probably gonna get a lot of terminology wrong and I might be doing things that um, are harder than they have to be. But uh, I'm gonna do what I can to show you everything that I did. So if you wanna do it yourself, um, you can do that. And uh, I do recommend checking out a lot of the other tutorials that are out there on uh, YouTube about this because that's how I found out about it. Uh, but a lot of them that I've noticed that are using this updated video function, we're doing it within Blender. So I'm slightly more comfortable in Unreal Engine and I didn't see any made in Unreal Engine yet. Um, they might be out there, but I didn't see any. So. I just decided that I would do it on Unreal Engine. And again, like Blender and Unreal Engine seem to be the two that it's pushing toward right now. I, I don't know if it would work in other um, 3D engines, but these are the two that they have plugins for, by the way. So uh, we are gonna be in Unreal Engine today. So let's get started. I'm gonna start from the beginning and we'll go through the whole thing. So the first thing you wanna do is get your green screen footage when you are lighting your subject, you want to make sure that they're lit pretty evenly, flat lighting. Um, the one I used, I downloaded this clip from Envato, not a sponsor or anything like that. Uh, this was just the most interesting clip that I found that had fairly even lighting in the face uh, compared to a lot of the other videos were businessmen just kind of looking at the screen, very stock footagey. And I just thought I could do something more interesting with this. So uh, there are some more shadows, but it actually worked out pretty well. But just keep in mind that uh, it is recommended that the lighting is more even, more flat when you're trying to light your subject. So you can take your green screen footage. I'm in After Effects. You can go into your compositor of choice. You want to key out your green screen. And then what you want to do from here is render it out into an image sequence. So I did the key here. I am, I rendered out a PNG sequence. So I have my PNG sequence here. And the important thing is that you make sure it is including the alpha channel so that you are just getting your subject and you don't have a black background or anything like that. The next thing you want to do if you haven't done it already is head over to beeble.ai, B-E-E-B-L-E dot A-I, and download the Switchlight Studio Open Beta. Now, it's free right now. I don't know if it's going to stay free. Um, so now's a good time to test it if you want. Um, you can also check through here. Uh, to, it just kind of goes over what all the... Um, Switchlight Studio uh, can do. But let's jump over to that. Here we are inside Switchlight Studio app or software, whatever the term is these days. I don't know, app, I guess. Um, it talks about the AI virtual production. Also, if you check out here, if you don't have um, After Effects or some software that can do green screen keying, it does have this AI background removal not sure how good it is. I haven't used it, but there's an option there for you uh, if you need it. But what we're looking at right here is material extraction. We've kind of went over that earlier. So you're just going to click get started. So that brings us into this screen here, which is pretty simple. You know, you've got your input output. Again, up here it mentions the need for uh, making sure that you have an alpha channel with your um, image sequence. So down here we're doing a video, so we're going to keep it a video model. 
Uh, the strength setting here deals with this temporal consistency. Strength number four is the default, so I would just recommend it keeping it there. Then we're going to come down to this line where you're going to select where your folder is that holds your image sequence. When you find your folder, you're going to select the first image and then hit open. It's going to add that there. Then you're going to select the output bin. You're going to open that, hit select folder. Once you have all that, you're going to hit extract and you're going to see the process start down here. When I ran it uh, for the full thing, this one I'm just doing a short test so that it takes less time. When I read it, the full thing, I had about 900 frames and I'd say it took 30 to 45 minutes to get through all of that. Uh, not sure how long this will take, but obviously it's going to be less. So I'll let you know how long that takes. While it's getting started, if you jump into the folder that you set as your output, you're going to notice this temp folder. And if we go in here, you're going to see albedo, depth, key, normal. This isn't going to be your final results. This is just sort of extracting a first pass of them. I think it's checking each image. Um, I'm not 100%. I know people out there probably know more about exactly what it's doing, but it's sort of just a first pass testing your images for, I think, quality or something like that. Uh, you'll end up being able to delete this folder, but um, I'll show you that once it's all done. All right, so we're all finished. Uh, it gives you this pop-up here, material extraction finished uh, when it's done. And I did a shorter sequence just for this video, and I used 24 frames. It took about three minutes to complete. Uh, the full one I did was about 900 to 1,000 frames, just under 1,000 frames. And that was, I think, 35, 40 minutes. So you can extrapolate there about how long it takes. But overall, it's pretty quick to process them. If we look at the folder here, now we have all those uh, albedo, depth, normal. And down here, you have the temp folder. Again, in here, you have the same thing. But you don't need this because all your information is here. This was just that first scan. So if you're looking to save space on your system, this is only 100 megabytes, but if you have a thousand files uh, before that, I think it was like three gigs. So you are safe to just delete the temp folder if you want to save space. Okay, so now that you have your materials extracted from Switchlight, we're going to come back into Switchlight Studio. You could do this before or after. I'm just going to show you now. If you uh, come all the way down to the bottom under Utility here, you're going to find the plugins that you'll use to import all this into either Blender or Unreal Engine. So you just download the plugin here. Uh, also, you'll definitely want to check out the manual because uh, it is a very simple step-by-step -step walkthrough, but it's going to show you the whole process. And so this is what I used, and I'm going to just go through this uh on actual Unreal Engine to show you the process, but I definitely recommend checking this out. So we're gonna jump into Unreal Engine. I did change my shirt. It is an entirely different day, but we're just gonna move on from that. We're not gonna talk about that. So let's go into Unreal Engine. Okay, so here we are in the Unreal Project Browser. I went over here to Film, Video, Live Events, Blank. I'm. You can check starter content if you want that, when you're setting up, you know, you, it might give you some more stuff to uh, build your environment with. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to do any building at the moment and it'll just load faster for me. But um, you, you can go ahead and check that if you're um, doing this for the first time. So anyway, project name, project uh, location, and you hit create and it's going to start loading and it's going to take a little bit. So I'm probably just going to jump forward. All right, so here we are in Unreal Engine. It's all loaded up. I did replace all of the atmosphere stuff that was defaulted there with what you see here. And that is just so that I can, by holding Control L, can shift the sunlight around a little bit. So um, I, th that's the only thing I changed from default. But so let's get into how to import all your switch light stuff. So the first thing you want to do is come up to edit plugins and you want to search for Python and make sure that you have this Python editor script plugin enabled. So I think mine was by default, 
but um, you'll have to check that to make sure. Once you have Python enabled, you'll come up here to Tools, go down to Execute Python Script. You're going to find your uh, wherever you saved that um, plugin. And mine's right here, PBR Loader, and you'll hit Open. And then what you'll see is right up here in the toolbar, I think that's showing, right? Yeah. Right up here in the toolbar, you'll see Switch Light Studio will appear. So the next thing you want to do is click Switch Light Studio. You'll want to import PBR maps. This is going to ask you for the location that you saved all of the Switch Light files. So mine were all right in here. So you're going to select this folder and it's going to import it. And here we go. So now you're probably got this in here and you go, wait a minute, it's just a black screen. Well, maybe if it's through camera view. Nope, still a black screen. So it does tell you this in the manual as the next step to open the PBR sequencer. I at first didn't really go to that because I saw this and I thought, oh, maybe there was something wrong um, or maybe I did something wrong. But um, that is actually the next step you need to do because once you do that, is when it's going to activate or you know show your keyed footage. So that definitely is a step that you don't want to skip is actually opening up the PBR sequencer. Uh, the other thing is it's going to be all saved here in movies. So if you ever have to go back to any of this stuff, if you ever need to go, you know, if you restart Unreal Engine, you're going to get that black screen again. So you definitely want to come back and reopen that PBR sequencer every time. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into our switch light camera view. So now we see the camera view. It doesn't look that great right here, but let's move the sun around. And as you can see, it changes the light on her depending on where the sun is. So you can see that the light changing is actually affecting our subject now this is obviously way too bright so you'll definitely want to adjust your camera settings maybe a post process volume to adjust things like that but once you get everything set up you can get to something like this so once you have your environment your lighting and everything set up now you can see that it's all lighting her way more naturally and if we take a look at the lamp i have this point light here and if we just kind of move it around, you can see how the light is interacting with her. You know, uh, oops, wrong way. So if we go, uh, if she raises it up, like in the demo you saw she raises it up and the light actually moves up to her face. So that's what's going on here. I basically just tracked the motion as she raised it up. And so it illuminated her, illuminated her face uh, naturally. So there's a lot you can do. You can expand this uh, radius to where it glows out farther. You can change the intensity of the glow. You can change the color. You know, you have full control over the lighting and how it interacts with your subject. Now, the one thing that it can't do too, ex too, too well it can kind of do it and I'll show you and that is if you want to do like a really good rim light or hair light so it can kind of get the edge so right like say I wanted a rim light up there you can kind of do stuff like that but you're not really going to get any light from behind you know if I move this down here and if I move this back into Z space, you can see that it's not really, you know, you can kind of see there, but if we check out the, if we fly around here, you can see that it's a flat image, right? So you're really only gonna get sort of the light on the edge of the image, but not like a really legitimate 
backlight that's coming from the back wrapping around. But, you know, for the most part, it does a really good job of mimicking it. So, you know, you could maybe turn the intensity down a little bit or up um, and play around with the settings to something like that, maybe. Uh, maybe you want it a little bit brighter. So you can kind of mimic an edge light, but just know that you're not actually going to be able to get a light from behind the person uh, interacting with it. So the last thing I wanted to show you was that I brought our subject a little closer to this fiery skeleton. She honestly is either extremely brave or so cold that she just said, you know what, I don't care that there's a flaming, scary, dead body in front of me. It's freaking cold outside, and I'm going to warm up by this nice little cozy fire here. Uh, but I brought her a little bit closer, and as you can see, all the fire effects are translating to her face. So again, whether it's fire, particles, whether it's your lights in the scene, it's all going to react way more naturally to her as if her character or your character is actually in that environment. And so I think this is just another good example of AI creating really useful tools for filmmakers, things that will actually be able to be used and low budget, indie, um, I mean, all levels for something like this uh, to just elevate the work um, and really allow people to explore ideas that otherwise they never would have been able to accomplish. You know, you can set up a green screen in your garage now and put yourself in an environment that's going to be lit as if you had a whole studio lighting set up and it will cost you nothing because right now switch light is free. Unreal Engine is free. And if you have the setup in your house, then that's free other than, you know, whatever you spent on buying the green screen and all that. But I'm saying like, you're not having to go out and rent studio space and things like that. Now, of course, it depends on the level that you want to go with your film, right? All things are relative, but this uh, unlocks definitely a new method to enhance your films and your productions. And so I definitely recommend checking this out. Go download it, go test it out. Um, like I said, it's all free right now. That all kind of seems to be changing. There's things in Unreal that are gray areas, it seems like. I'm not uh, extremely familiar with that, but I know that a lot of the um, mega scans are moving over to Fab, which right now they are all free. But after 2024, you're going to have to pay for them. So again, if you haven't gotten into Unreal yet, if you're thinking about getting into Unreal Engine and learning that, I think now would be the time to do that. Uh, go do that. Go sign up to Fab and um, claim all the mega scans because then you'll have all the assets for free. And that is where I got, uh, let me get out of here. And that is where I got all of these assets. All of these assets that are that you see here that I created this environment with was all from mega scans. So those were all free. If you want to get them, go claim them now, I recommend. So I just wanted to sort of go over the beats of how to set this up. But I think that it's super simple. I think anybody can really get it. I think that their manual is definitely a great step-by-step -step process, and it'll tell you everything you need to know. I, that's about all I have to say for this, and, uh, you know, that's the end of this video.